Here's how I took the two flex guitar patches from this track and used layering and processing to turn them from this. To this. So the first patch that I used here was the muted strat one. I didn't really change much in here except for pitching it down an octave so it would sound more like a bass guitar and then turning the reverb down. And then I used three different patterns over the course of this track. So we start out with more of like a rhythmic and building intro where I'm raising the velocities on these little same note guitar strums. Then right before we get to the drop, I switch to this like repeated F sharp. which kind of acts like the snare roll or kick stutter the before the drop that some tracks will have. Then I have the second pattern, which slows down and centers more on C sharp, which is what the key of this track is. Then for the third pattern here, I shift the notes up an octave and add a couple note flourishes and like extra guitar strum stutters. just to kind of make it sound more like a real guitarist is playing this. And the reason that I had to shift it up is because if it's pitched down an octave, I lose some of the notes here because it bottoms out on B. And so my workaround for this was doing a second guitar layer. Where I have these green notes that I just manually pitched down to act as an A sharp and an F sharp where I had those in the original pattern. So I rendered that to audio and that's what I have right here. But instead of just leaving it as that, I kind of liked how it sounded layered with the higher guitar, especially after I added my post effects chain to it, where it sounds like this with the entire bass pattern layered under it, but then loses a lot of weight when I don't add that bottom layer. The post effects I use for this are really simple. It's just a distortion where I added a distortion with a guitar cabinet. Then a dynamic EQ that's kind of accentuating the high end of it. And then a fab filter Saturn with a smooth amp emulation. But if you don't have Saturn, it's okay. You can kind of get the same effect using Destructor with just a little bit more work. So here I sent it through a fast distortion, then a high shelf filter. So I'm just boosting the highs. And then another guitar cabinet right here, which you can find in the little speaker section. Or you can use hardcore with whichever guitar cabinet you feel like sounds nice. For this one, I think K sounds the best. And that processing not only works well for this section, but also makes it like a thumpier bass guitar part in the first two sections. So the second patch that I used was the power quarter patch, which to me kind of sounds like a punk or metal guitar. but you get these nice chuggy strums whenever you repeat a string. The only adjustments I made was turning down the low band because I wanted this to be like a mid and high end filler uh, since the other guitar's already taken up so much low range. And then I just turned the distance down because the one problem with this patch to me is it's so wide. So that kind of brings that in a little bit. So then I went in and added a couple more post effects to this just to kind of beef it up, which is a fruity distortion to get it really nice and crispy. Then an EQ to boost the mids a little bit and the highs a lot. And that doesn't really sound that nice, but it's gonna work well once we add it to the post-processing that we bust these together and do. And then lastly, I added a stereo enhancer and used it to reduce the stereo on this. So then I took the first guitar patch, routed it to a mix bus, and the second one and routed that to a mix bus where I added a couple more effects. So before adding the post effects on the mix bus, the three layers together sound like this. Then with the mix bus effects, they sound like this. Which is pretty subtle, so it was mostly just gluing the sounds together and trying to make them take up one space. So the first effect that I added here was called reduce range, which is actually just a compressor. So as you can see in the oscilloscope here, all that's doing is really taking the dynamic range, so the difference between the loudness of each of the strums and just bringing them together and making them one uniform loudness. Then next I add a multiband compressor. Then 
it's kind of doing the same thing that the first glue compressor does, except in this case, it's making all the lows, no matter how many layers or whatever I add to the track, kind of be in the same loudness as well. And then the same thing with the mids and the highs. Then lastly, I added another Saturn to it uh, with warm tape saturation instead of guitar cabinet emulation, which is just gonna not change the tone of my sound too much, but warm it up a bit. So this versus this. Pretty subtle, but it does make a difference, I think, which all comes together to be what I used in the full version of the track, which sounds like this. And so that's going to do it for this one, y'all. I wanted to try doing some really short focus tutorials on this track that I just put out a clip of to see if having really digestible tutorials was helpful in the algorithm or not. And I'm going to be breaking down a bunch of different parts of this track. So you can click the video or go down in the description and all the other tutorials that I did related to this track will be in that. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.